thank you for inviting me to be uh, in the team uh, for this FAO meetings. So I have been uh, uh, in the meeting for this is the third time, and uh, it is very, very much my pleasure to be here. So uh, I will start with the Soul Action Plan, uh, the background of the Soul Action Plan. And uh, the last time we met in Seoul, Korea, uh, it was in on 15 September 2017. And uh, we came out with the Soul Action Plan, which has the aims of the expanding awareness of the benefits that urban forests and trees provide to communities throughout the Asia Pacific region, to sustain and foster the growth of urban forests and trees as key contributors to resilient cities, to support the local and national decision makers in planning, designing, and managing their green capital, to provide guidance on the key action to be taken more, more sustainable urban development. So that was uh, the gist of the aims uh, of Seoul Action Plan. And Simone has explained a bit about this uh, on the first day. So it was the result of our urban forestry meeting uh, in Seoul, uh, which was a follow up on the recommendation included in the Zuhai Declaration in China uh, in 2016. So more information uh, you can gain uh, from the link that uh, was shown below. And um, when we talk about urban forestry, we always talk about the benefits. So if we look uh, about from uh, various publication, and this one is actually from the FAO um, website, is that uh, research shows that urban forests increase the quality of urban living by increasing the risk to severe weather event, uh, trees remove pollutant from the air and cool the urban environment. So this is actually um, some of the subjects that uh, we will be addressing in this safer cities. So urban trees uh, increase soil stability and improve availability of water. There is an example of um, the roadside jamun trees that can produce up to 500 tons of fruit per year. And there is a 10% increase, increase in urban green space, which can postpone onset of health problem by up to five years. So this is from previous studies. And the end is the prevalence of obesity among children living in areas with good access to green space is reduced by roughly 10 to 20% compared to urban areas where children have limited or no access to green space. So that is the general uh, benefit of urban forest. So in this uh, goal of soil action plan, uh, there were eight goals um, that was identified based on the set of guiding principle. And uh, one is the greener cities, cleaner cities, cooler cities, healthier cities, more inclusive cities, more biodiversity cities. All six we have discussed in the previous uh, discussion. And today we are going to discuss about the wealthier cities. And uh, I am responsible now uh, to moderate on the safer cities uh, team. So, um, so I would be focusing very much about increasing resilience to extreme weather events, flooding events, storm water runoff, land and landscape degradation, but not just uh, on that. I will also touch uh, on the uh, sociological aspect. When uh, we say that urban forests contribute to a safer city, uh, what do we mean by a safe city? So um, in Malaysia, there is uh, our Department of Town and Country, Country Planning planning in the uh, state of Selangor that define uh, the city as safe is that a city free from all physical, social, and mental threat. The environment always in a state of most concern does not generate an atmosphere that will encourage incident that threaten local property prosperity. So um, for the purpose of uh, today's theme, uh, I will try to focus in what we mean by safe city, uh, something like this. And now uh, we talk about, uh, when we talk about safer cities, we talk about the function of urban forest. So there are five uh, functions that I would highlight in this presentation, uh, which one is uh, adaptation and mitigation of climate change. Second one is the water management. Uh, three is the provision or acting as natural biological filters to air pollution and dust. The fourth one is the provision of safe and affordable areas for nature experience. So well, um, most of the references that we see will talk about uh, climate change, water management, and, and maybe air filters. But I do believe that the sociological aspect uh, of being safe 
is also very important. So I would like to address that a little bit more um, in this presentation. So uh, when we have this provision of safe uh, area, uh, it is also going to be um, uh, mentally uh, satisfying for the people living in the cities. And uh, the last one, we talk about the safe areas for human, uh, but we also should talk about safe areas for wildlife, plants and ecosystem or biodiversity. So uh, when we say that we have urban forests, we should also provide a safe haven uh, for wildlife, uh, threatened plants and ecosystems. And now uh, I think this is a very popular, uh, very uh, popular diagram uh, that has been shown uh, about uh, how uh, we can contribute uh, towards the sustainable goals, uh, SDGs. Uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, then um, we talk about uh, the first function that I mentioned was adaptation and mitigation of climate change. So why do we say that um, urban forests can contribute towards mitigation of climate change? Uh, the reason is that uh, it captures and store atmospheric carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. It also influences needs for heating and cooling building. There is an example that a uh, calculation has been made for the United States in the contiguous, uh, contiguous United States, which means the 48 states. Uh, urban trees store over 708 million tons of carbon, which is about 12.6% uh, of the carbon dioxide emission in the United States, and capture 28.2 million tons of carbon, or, or annual emission is 0.05% per year. So that is um, the contribution of uh, the plants that they have in there. So carbon sequestration is 2 billion per year with a total current carbon storage value of over 50 billion. So um, there is um, a lot of, uh, uh, we have to think about uh, when we, we, we do this calculation as well, but uh, I think many countries are going uh, towards this. So there's the shedding and reduction of wind speed that provides shading. Can I check if you guys can hear me or not? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Noor. Don't worry, go ahead. You can hear me, yeah? Yes. Okay, because my, I think my, my microphone just went off. No, no, it's fine. We can hear you. Okay. So um, if you look uh, at the chart uh, on the right, we see that um, if we talk about adaptation and mitigation of climate change, uh, we will be uh, addressing um, number 13, sustainable development goal number 13, climate action. And I think if we talk about stormwater runoff, we will also be talking about life below water. So with uh, urban forests um, around us, we are able to uh, ameliorate uh, climate change and uh, to control uh, a water that is not healthy for the life uh, below water. So to me, um, we are addressing two sustainable goals uh, if we talk about adaptation and mitigation of climate change or storm management. Okay, so there are many uh, references, many studies has been done for this. Uh, I will not go through all of them, but if you look at the keywords, there is the solar radiation. Uh, there are studies in solar radiation. Uh, Gray and Deneke is uh, like our main textbook uh, for urban forestry. Um, we now have more, but this is like, a, well, anyway, in my days, which is like many, many moons ago. <laughs> and now the urban heat island effect uh, is very much, uh, uh, the topics of research, uh, research in many areas. So um, a lot of them is compiled in Kojinen Dyke uh, 2013. And even in Malaysia, some studies have been done uh, on UHI, uh, where it was recommended that effectiveness of small city parks can be made as strategies to reduce Kuala Lumpur heat island effect. And uh, city surfaces and other materials that absorb solar radi radiation uh, has been studied by NOAC. The, this is, uh, by the way, all the, the big names in urban forestry, and, and I think they're very well known uh, in this area. Uh, Lifesley, uh, Stephen Lifesley uh, studied on urban forest and ecosystem services, the impacts on urban water, heat, and pollution cycles of tree, street, and city scale. And now uh, we also have uh, studies done uh, on simulated potential of heat island. Uh, and it was found that annual energy from solar reflective roofs at 20%, shade 30%, wind shielding of trees 37%, and ambient cooling by trees and reflective services 12%. In Malaysia, um, Shahruddin has studied on urban heat island and uh, found that um, 
parks are sought after as the tree shade provides comfortable condition from direct solar radiation that is uh, very much understandable as Malaysia is a, is a very warm country. And uh, finally, there is also a lot of studies uh, in China, including the soil carbon pool or forest ecosystem in low subtropical China. So these um, uh, references, by the way, can be found in FAO 2016. Okay. <clears throat> now we look at the second function, which is the water management function. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, we have found that water quality improved with the existence of vegetation, rainfall impact reduced, and salt erosion prevented from entering the waterways, thus reducing storm water runoff and the risk of flood and death uh, or threat uh, on the water. In areas that are not paved, <coughs> water can be absorbed and surface runoff reduced. So um, we have, uh, as our panel member today, uh, our panel uh, session during our panel, um, Dr. Zukifli Yusuf, who is uh, from University of Technology Malaysia. So we will hear more about this. <clears throat> Vegetation has many engineering uses, uh, which also include water management. Yeah. So um, this, uh, when we look at uh, again at our diagram of sustainable development goals. We see that uh, number six is very much in there. So having an urban forest will help us um, achieve um, clean water and sanitation. And we talk about flooding and uh, again, uh, life below water that I mentioned before. So um, I try to relate to as much as to the SDGs because um, I like the diagram is very colorful and nice. Anyway, so um, we see that this is a function that is always associated with benefits of urban forest. The function number three is the natural biological filters to air pollution and dust. So um, we have, uh, um, we know a lot uh, from a lot of previous studies that plants can absorb inorganic and organic gases. So some of the uh, pollutants that they can absorb is ozone, nitrogen oxide, ammonia, and sulfur dioxide. So there have been studies, um, even by film researcher in Malaysia. So there are filter particulate matter like dust, micro sized metal and other pollutants that can also be absorbed uh, by leaf, but it also depends on the type of leaves. So plants can absorb uh, 80% uh, up to 80% of ozone gas and they can absorb odors and pollutant gases, uh, like I mentioned above. So in one year, it's been said that amateur trees can provide enough oxygen for 18 people. This is from three people, 2016. But I do believe this uh, is actually uh, depending on the type of plants that we are talking about. And trees aid in the remo removal of airborne particulates such as sun, dust, ash, pollen, and smoke to an area. Um, research on forest effect on egg quality and human health in the United States found that trees remove 17.4 million tons of air pollution with human health effects valued at 6.8 billion US dollars. Again, um, David Nowak was the one who was studying this. And uh, in Korea, there was a study on ecosystem function and services urban forest for a quality beside water, water supply. This study was conducted to convince the policymaker uh, that in the case of air purification and air pollutant absorption capacity, the ecosystem services could be related to social condition, condition as well as environmental division. So this is a good tool uh, for us to convince a politician for conservation or for establishment of urban forests. And um, number four, I will go towards the sociological aspect that uh, urban forests provide safe and affordable areas for nature experience. Uh, why do I say that? Because um, nature is very important in the development um, of, of our mental health, as well as um, we always talk about going back to nature um, uh, as, as something that is innate uh, in, our, in our spirit. And uh, not everybody uh, can afford to go to a forest, um, to a real uh, national, uh, for, for example, a national forest that is uh, quite remote. And um, maybe it's not because of economy, but because of access uh, and because of um, uh, physical ability. For example, uh, for elderly people and for very young people, urban forests can become an area where uh, nature 
education can be conducted and being in nature is something that uh, can connect us uh, to um, um, our culture. So um, uh, urban forestry contributes to physical and well-being. So not only just for exercising, but also uh, being uh, in the areas where it's natural. For example, in the Eastern world, we are very familiar with uh, Tai Chi or Qi Gong, uh, which is uh, about getting the positive um, energy from nature. So, um, but there are also studies being done uh, such as uh, on recovery rate in hospital and recovery centers showing that reduced stress in the presence of nature. So we all need this um, in this very busy world. And um, well, we have a lot of online meetings, like four meetings in a day. And um, I think we do need to go out once in a while. And urban forests uh, give us that opportunity to recreate. And um, we look at the other studies as well. Uh, in Japan, for example, a bathing trip once a month would enable individuals to maintain natural killer activities. So there are some studies on that. Uh, walkable green space positively influence the longevity of urban senior citizen by Takano. And uh, there is also studies on children 5 to 18 years old with attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder uh, found reduced symptoms with present of greenery. So uh, these are some of the studies that try to show how um, urban forest or any forest for that matter is uh, good uh, for our mental health. Uh, but like I mentioned, not everyone can go to the real um, remote forest. So uh, urban forests uh, give us this opportunity. And uh, if we look at the diagram again on the SDGs, uh, providing safe and affordable areas for nature experience uh, is actually uh, addressing um, goal number three, uh, good health and well-being. And uh, 11, sustainable cities and communities. So this is uh, very important uh, in the development of a nation. And um, again, uh, uh, like I mentioned, everyone have these needs of escapism. That is, uh, we cannot be living in the concrete jungle for all of our time, but uh, some people can, but uh, I don't think it's very healthy for their mental. So this escapism um, is, is something that we need uh, so that we can, uh, uh, that's the, where the word recreate come from, that's the word where recreation can more come from, is that uh, we have to uh, more, more or less like uh, uh, looking into ourselves and uh, 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 recreate um, our, our positive values and, and um, our innate values. So um, in this sense, if we have an urban forest, it is more accessible, it is more affordable, and it is safer. And um, for example, um, in uh, this is picture taken in Malaysia, um, uh, there is a lot of exercise uh, that is being conducted um, uh, in a group, for example, it's very organized. Uh, for example, uh, there is this uh, dancing or there is Tai Chi or Qigong, like I mentioned. So um, it's also served uh, for social interaction for specific communities due to the use of common space. And it brings significance to cultural heritage. So some of these um, uh, papers uh, discuss a little bit more detail about this. And uh, physical and mental health. Um, who would not um, would like to be outdoor uh, if you have the choice and in the cooling water, like I said, um, especially in our tropical region, uh, it is very warm and people uh, come um, to recreate in very shady areas. Uh, so trees uh, provide um, a good area for this kind of activities. And uh, we say, um, uh, the environment always is a state of most conserved. This is, uh, I'm recalling the definition uh, by the town and country planning uh, department, which is the environment always in a state of most conserved, does not generate an atmosphere that will encourage incidents that threaten local prosperity. So to me, um, health is wealth. So when we talk about prosperity, we also look at mental health and physical health. Okay, and um, I did say uh, that when we have an area in, in, in the urban areas, it is more accessible and safer for people who is um, elderly or for people who are young and who cannot uh, be traveling uh, uh, have, uh, uh, or cannot be um, 
do not have the capacity or to, to go to a very remote area. So uh, it is a safe place uh, to explore and uh, to talk, um, to get nature into our system. So um, then number five. So this is the last function that I'm talking about. Uh, it teaches the provision of safe areas for the biodiversity conservation, wildlife, plants, and ecosystem. ecosystem. When we talk about biodiversity, we talk about wildlife, we talk about plants, and we talk about ecosystems. So there are certain areas uh, that are shown, uh, for example, wetland ecosystem, which is very important uh, as a flood mitigation um, um, uh, 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 area. And um, there is also educational elements that can be uh, conducted in that kind of area. So there are places that we should be setting aside, uh, leave it in nature and see what um, animals uh, can, will, will be there and what plants can thrive in the area. And environmental education is very important. So this is some of the things that we have done. Uh, Singapore has very good environmental uh, education programs. And uh, in, Mal in Malaysia, in uh, Frim as well, we have our, we target uh, young children uh, to go into the forest to teach them about the ecosystem and our uh, heritage of natural forests. Okay, so when we do this, um, I see that we are addressing all these um, sustainable development goals. For example, number three, just now, good health and well being. So, this is a summary of all the five functions. We are um, looking at sustainable cities and communities, which is goal number 11. We are looking at climate action, which was addressed by the immigration capacity of urban forests. And uh, life below water, when we talk about uh, clean water on land, it also means that life below water uh, will be safer. And we were talking about life on land when we talk about biodiversity. Uh, I miss a um, uh, uh, a circle on number six as well, clean water and sanitation. Because I can show an example uh, in Thailand, uh, which shows that how clean water and sanitation is important in Bangkok. So um, there are some examples that uh, I would like to show towards the end of my uh, PowerPoint presentation is uh, some examples from uh, our neighboring countries, I mean Malaysian neighboring countries. So for example, this is Singapore. Singapore is very well known, uh, not only about creating green areas, but also for preserving uh, what is already there, like the Sungai Bulo uh, Bird Park and, and the other uh, uh, Jurong Bird Park and Sungai Bulo Forest Reserve, which is, I think, um, very exemplary. And uh, they have green connectors, they, they're connecting uh, their green areas, which is very good uh, to use, not only for human, but also for nature uh, to go from one place to another. And um, that is uh, Singapore, and, and I think we have heard a few presentations uh, with regard to Singapore, and it is one of the countries that we all should uh, try to get example from. Okay, um, and uh, this is an, another example. Um, this is uh, uh, if the picture there is of Miss Kochakon Volakon, Volakon. She uh, originally, I would like to ask her to be in our panel of um, discussion, but unfortunately, she is not able to come. But uh, it is very interesting uh, what she did. Uh, she's a landscape architect. She designed the urban space with climate uh, in mind and uh, due to flooding and, and a lot of um, um, uh, water related problems in Bangkok. So uh, she and her uh, uh, colleague uh, designed a um, park that actually can collect water. If you look uh, at the topmost uh, on the right, uh, on my right, uh, that is, uh, you see how the water is collected and um, at certain time, the bottom part will be flooded and that uh, water is safe. And uh, it can also be used uh, for fun uh, by children for recreation. So the park is designed in such a way uh, that it would not um, it would not waste uh, what she said a single drop of water. And um, this is kind of innovations that I think should come in urban forestry uh, to maximize the benefits that urban forests can bring to people. So you look at that, I, I just like to put that in industry innovation and infrastructure. So I think if you come up with this, urban forest can also be an innovative, um, uh, um, uh, innovative uh, act uh, that uh, we can be proud of. 
Okay, now back uh, to my own country in Malaysia. So um, I would like to put the example of Putrajaya and Administrative Center uh, of the Federal Government of Malaysia. And uh, we have presented uh, this uh, presentation in New Delhi uh, in 2012, a long time ago, but uh, I'm borrowing this PowerPoint to, um, uh, this, uh, to explain about the concept um, how Putrajaya was conceived. So uh, the idea was mooted in middle 1980s, so it's quite early, launched on October 8, uh, 1997, and at the moment the population is about um, 100,000 people, and it is known as the garden city or smart city, uh, with 39% uh, open space. So if you look um, at, the, at the table, then you can see that um, Open space and recreation uh, takes about 1,930 uh, hectare, uh, hectares of the total area. Uh, Lord, so uh, sorry, that the, sounds Lord, cool. Sorry to jump in. Uh, your time is up. If you could try and wrap up. Thank you. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. So, yeah, give me two minutes. So this is an example of how... Um, uh, Putrajaya is, is well uh, designed. So it is also uh, designed with 11 uh, parks at the moment and from the botanical garden to a forest to a park. And this is how it looks like. Uh, and the, you see a lot of water there. But what is it? It's the Putrajaya Eco Hydrological Operational Site. So uh, this is um, something that is different. It is UNESCO International Hydrological Program. And I think it is, very some, it is something that we are very proud of. And uh, we also do the inventory for the trees, which will allow for calculation of carbon stock in amelioration of climate change. Okay, so this is my last slide. So um, I, I'm just uh, introducing the four panel speakers here, uh, but um, we will hear more from them. So we will talk about urban hydrology. We will talk about climate uh, amelioration. We also talk about uh, social, social values. And um, we also talk about store management. So with that, uh, I thank you.